All right, so during the month of April, I added six books to my Goodreads TBR. Now, I need to make a confession, a caveat, a disclaimer here, I think. Um, these are not all of the books that I'm adding to my Goodreads TBR each month. Um, I have kind of transformed this video to really include the books that I am getting from specific recommendations. So if books are being added to my Goodreads TBR because I entered a Goodreads giveaway, I don't typically include those um, because the only reason I heard about them was from Goodreads giveaways and I may remove them from my want to read list. It just kind of depends. Um, I also will occasionally just like randomly come across a whole bulk amount of recommendations of a specific thing and add a bunch of stuff and then I'll get to the end of the month and I'm like I have 23 books here and I don't know where half of them came from so and I a lot of times will go through and I'll weed a lot of those out but sometimes I don't remember where I'm getting recommendations from and so I don't include them because or they're not ones that I can foresee myself like actually getting to and so I'm like going back and removing those so when I say I only added six books to my Goodreads TBR, that's what I mean. Really, I probably added like 15 books to my Goodreads TBR in the month of April, but most of them were either like bulk things that I heard of and I just went through and added a bunch that were on a set list or and then I like will go back later and really research more about what they're about or it's Goodreads giveaways that I entered. I hope that makes sense. So you are absolutely free to follow me on Goodreads. My Goodreads link is always down below in the description box and you can follow me there and then you can see exactly what I add and when I add it. Um, and you can ask questions and all that stuff if you would like. So let's get into the six books that I do want to share with you today, which are the books that I have heard about from either specific people, specific sources, that sort of thing. So the first book that I want to talk to you about is Dodger by Terry Pratchett. This is a book that was recommended to me by Shalise at And Read Another Chapter. Um, she recommended this after my last two book hauls ago, something like that. I hauled Oliver Twist and I said I would really like to actually read that. And she said, ooh, you should read Dodger because this is an Oliver Twist retelling, I believe from the point of view of Dodger. So I thought that that would be a lot of fun. So I added it. Um, another one that I added, this is like, I feel like everything I just said is gonna go down the toilet because um, the second book, I don't remember exactly where I heard about it from. I have a general idea, but I'll get to that in a minute. But that is We Are Not Free by Tracy Chi. This is a book that is about a set of 14 um, Japanese second gen second generation Japanese immigrants that were sent to an internment camps during World War II. Um, I have mentioned a couple of times here I'm currently doing a unit study with my homeschool kiddos and we're going over World War II right now and it's been such an amazing unit. Oh my goodness. I'm actually going to link the unit the study that we've been doing. I got it off of Teachers Pay Teachers and I am just loving it so much because it's going into all these like little niche things throughout World War II which is a big beef that I have with the way World War II is taught in the public school system here in the U.S. is that we don't get a lot of the other details other than the Holocaust and Pearl Harbor. Like that's really it and so and like maybe D-Day depending on your teacher you know it's like we really don't talk a lot about you know the Tuskegee Airmen and the Navajo Code Talkers and you know, the Japanese internment camps and what they really were and, you know, all these like really amazing things that happened during World War II that I'm so glad that my kids are getting to learn about. Okay, that was a total like rabbit trail. I will link the unit that we're, or the study that we're doing down below. My hair is driving me crazy. But this book is about a set of 14 second generation Japanese immigrant I don't think I don't know if I said that right but they end up they end up getting sent to a Japanese internment camp during World War II. I found this when I was I like did a Google search for middle grade books to read about World War II or um, to read aloud like classroom read alouds for World War II. Wow that took a lot of brain power to get that sentence out but anyway I think you guys get what I got <laughs> get what I'm saying. Oh Amanda get a grip. So anyway, 
this one came up in the search and it was one I had never heard of before. I, a lot of them that came up, I had already heard of before. Um, Number of the Stars, uh, War That Saved My Life. Um, I don't know. There's a lot of them that I had already heard of, but this one I had never heard of before. And so, and I love that it's about the Japanese internment camps. Um, and so I want to read it. All right, moving on. That was, that was rough. All right, the next one that I have on this list um, is one that I have seen a lot around social media, like over the past year, year and a half, I would say. Um, but it is Jesus and John Wayne by Kristen Kobes Dumez. Um, the subtitle for this is How White Evangelicals Corrupted a Faith and Fractured a Nation. So, <sighs> how do I talk about this? I am a white evangelical. And this book is very political. It's very, um, it, it has a lot of opinion in it. And I put it on my list to read. First of all, I heard about it first from Erin Moon, which is an Instagram account that I follow. Um, she is uh, part of the um, podcast media group. They, um, she has a bunch of podcasts. Um, they have, whatever. She's just part of this group that I kind of follow on Instagram and they have podcasts and all these things. But it was a book club pick for her over the past year. And then I had started seeing other people that had read it and the different types of people that had read it made me interested in um, what I would think of it because different people that I know have different religious beliefs and different political beliefs had been reading it. And so I just kind of added it to this list because I think it would be a very interesting read from an education standpoint. Um, I don't like to get into politics like at all, like at all at all. That is not my love in life is not politics. That's okay. Um, but I do like to be aware of the social climate in our country um, and religious climate in our country. And I feel like this would give me a good education on one aspect of that, of one person's opinion of that. All right, I feel like that was enough of an explanation of that. Okay, um, the next one that I added to this list is Property of the Rebel Librarian by Alison Varnes. Um, this is one that I first heard about from Krista at Books and Jams. She um, hauled it during an unboxing of a, I don't remember the name of the box that she had unboxed, but it's like a middle grade girls book box. And she had unboxed this and it sounds a lot like the premise of Ban This Book by Alan Gratz, which I love. And I have had both of my kids read that book because I think that the message of that book is so good. Um, and so it, this is about a girl who she, there are some banned books that come about in her school, like books get banned at her school. And so she decides to, I don't know if it's like a little free library that she sets up for banned books or what it is, but it's something along those lines. So I went ahead and added this because anything that has to do with cens censorship in school libraries, I find very fascinating, especially how kids react to the censorship in their libraries. And so I added that one. All right, the next one here is Goodnight Beautiful by Amy Malloy. This one, um, I did a live stream for my like three year, not three year, two year booktube anniversary. Um, and so Tia from Tia and all the books had recommended this. I think we were talking about thrillers and how I'm a baby when it comes to thrillers, but I would like to read more thrillers. And she had recommended it. And then a bunch of other people were saying, yes, that was a great book. Yes, that was a great book. And so I think this one's a thriller, if I remember right. Um, I don't really know what it's about because everybody says, don't read the synopsis of thrillers. Don't read the synopsis of thrillers. So I have no idea what it's about, but it's called Good Night Beautiful and it's by Amy Malloy and a bunch of people said it was good. So I'm just kind of taking their word for it. All right, the next one that I have here, the last one that I have here is Long May She Reign by Rhiannon Thomas. This is one that Tiffany from Beautiful Minutia had recommended during that same live stream. Um, she was talking about how she doesn't really like series or um, YA fantasy, I think. And she said, but this is a YA fantasy standalone that she really liked. And it sounds a lot like Designated Survivor, the TV show where like the secretary of housing and urban development becomes president because everybody else gets taken out. Um, this is kind of the same thing, but in a YA fantasy 
set up. So she is like the, it's in a, this fantasy world, there's a king and she's like 23rd in line for a throne, for the throne. And then all of a sudden something happens, everybody else gets taken out, she becomes queen and doesn't really want to be queen. <laughs> and so she kind of has to learn how to deal with it. Now my hand's stuck in my hair. Oh my goodness, Amanda, get a grip. All right. Um, that's all I really know about it. But Tiffany said she really enjoyed it. And so I added it to the list because I trust Tiffany. So that's it. Those are the six books that I wanted to encourage you to maybe check out if they, you know, strike a fancy with you or whatnot. And yeah, that's what I'm going to share with you today. So let me know what you think of these books. If you've read them, I'd love to hear your opinions about them. What are some books that you added to your TBR in the month of April or May or whatever? Um, let me know some of the new books that have been on, been put on your radar. I especially love doing this for like older books because I feel like a lot of times we're talking about the new releases coming out and a lot of times we're adding those to our TBRs. But the old books that have been out for forever that are like all of a sudden coming, you know, or crossing our paths for the first time, it's, it's fun to kind of share those. So, all right, that's it for today. I hope that you enjoyed this and I hope that you stick around and subscribe. And until next time, see ya.